Hey everyone, welcome to the Church Brand Guide Podcast. My name is Michael Persad. My name is Dennis Esteban. Hey, we are jumping into a great topic today of how to lead leadership. In fact, this is part two of our episode. We had uh, just a great time recording. The episode went a little bit long, so we broke it up into two parts. This will be part two. So let's jump in and let's find out the other two points to, to help you to lead leadership in communications. So you go from trust. Now your, your, your pastor, your leadership, they trust you. Then now, in terms of gaining an influence uh, in decision-making and different things like that, it's timing, understanding uh, when to bring things up, uh, how to prepare uh, and plan for that, looking at the calendar, looking at seasons. Uh, but along with timing, I think the next thing that it leads us to is something we briefly mentioned, but it's tactics, Right. Uh, so when you're when you're approaching this, right, one of the way that you lead your leadership is you bring to them tactics, right? Different things that you can do uh, to out essentially move the needle forward. It's creating a plan. It's getting strategic, uh, right? Uh, so for me, I, you know, I think in the roles that I've been in, uh, that's one of the things that I did very well. Um, is coming up with tactics, right? Coming up with the ways uh, to think about things, right? Uh, one of the things that I did, um, you know, when when I was over the communications team, uh, I would do a walkthrough, right? Uh, I would do a walkthrough with uh, the people that I was training. And I, I did a walkthrough of the whole Sunday experience from the parking lot, to the greeters, to um, going through the lobby, um, through sitting in their seat. But when I did that walkthrough, I also began to realize different areas of ministries that could have been improved, right? And what did I do? I Again, me being consistent, I went back and I put that in my SWOT analysis, right? But what happened is when we did those walkthroughs, we began to get a picture of two things. One, what did the Sunday experience look like for the person coming in, right? So if we know what the typical Sunday experience looked like for the uh, people coming in, then we know, okay, here's where we need to position some photographers. Here where we need to position some videographers. Post-service, this is where we need to be standing to get the best photos and the best videos of people uh, walking out. Uh, this is where we need to be to be uh, getting these moments. So it was tactical, right? It wasn't just, hey, let's grab a couple cameras and take pictures, right? So again, on a Sunday, my fo my photography team, they would go out in the parking lot, they'd be taking pictures. I'd have somebody else by the coffee table, by the connect corner, uh, grabbing video, right? So being tactical. Uh, you know, and one thing just real quick while mm -hmm. you're saying that, I, I love that because you're helping them to win. Like you're helping that photographer to know how to win. You're saying, hey, take this picture. Here's some good spots that you can stand. And you're just helping them to win, which which encourages them to be even more part of the team. I love that. Right. Uh, and, and I think that's what it what, that's what it is being tactical. Right. It's understanding uh, who you guys are as an organization right now and creating a strategy and creating a plan for who you want to become maybe 10 years down the line maybe 20 years down the line, right? For example, I was a part of a younger church, right? We didn't want to stay a younger church. We wanted to bring in some families. We wanted, So then ta being tactical, right? And sometimes people don't like using that word in church, right? But being tactical, especially with my photography team, I realized that knowing who, because of who we wanted to become, hey, let's just, let's not just take photos and videos of the college kid every single Sunday. Let's actually look for some opportunities. Uh, let's maybe put up a wall, right? This is tactic, right? Let's maybe put up a photo wall uh, with a nice little backdrop because every single Sunday, families are going to want to go and they're going to want to take pictures next to that backdrop. Sure you know, I love enough. that too. I, just to add to your the, what you're saying, like you're you're um, you're doing the legwork, the research. You're learning all the different um, ways to do things, and then you're bringing that to the table. 
So like I, I, for me, like I would visit other churches, I would go to conferences, I would take online courses, you know, and then you bring to the table some tactics that you could then use at, at your church. Right. So, for example, when I bring something up like, hey, I think we need to uh, really invest in putting up a nice photo wall. I call it an Instagrammable. Uh, let's put up a nice little section in our environment somewhere. Uh, and I don't think it should just be something with the church logo. Maybe it's a grass wall or something with some props or whatever, but some place that people can go take pictures. Sure enough, when we did that, every single Sunday, people would go and they would take photos next to that wall. And then the next thing that they would do is they would post it, right? And again, being tactical, right? It's really sitting back, observing, uh, being consistent for a while. So then when I bring up these things to, uh, to my leadership, it's not, hey, I want to do this because I think it's a great idea. It's, oh, hey, I've noticed this. Uh, so I believe if we do this, then this could potentially be the outcome, right? Uh, I'm, coming up, I'm coming from a place of careful planning, Right. Because right. your, your leadership is not going to be like, hey, can we put an Instagram wall? Like they're not going to know that. Yeah. That's not their calling. That's not what they're supposed to be doing. They're thinking about the spiritual growth of the people. You're bringing that other that other side of it. And, and here's the other thing. It's like when you're tactical, you can go to your leadership with confidence. Like I, there are so many communications people that I've talked to that for some reason, it's like they're scared of their leadership. Right. Like they're scared to bring something up They're They're scared to, uh, you know, bring up an idea. So really, instead of actually leading a conversation over time is they become a taskmaster and see what happens is when you become a taskmaster. Now, it, that, that just becomes a list for you to check off and you're no longer doing ministry. And that's how you get burnt out. But this this idea of being tactical when you come in with some tactics, when you see how can it move the needle forward for the long term and you bring that to your when you bring that to your leadership, now they're looking at it from a different point of view. We're not putting up this Instagrammable because we want to be hip and trendy or whatever, but we're putting up this Instagrammable because we're creating moments for people. Moments that we can then reshare, moments that we can then highlight, and moments that's going to give the church more exposure online. Yeah, and I love that. Like when you communicate the idea, like, so again, just trying to give you some practical uh, advice that I found works. Don't communicate the what. Hey, let's do an Instagram wall. Communicate the why behind the it. Why. Hey, what if we created moments? Can we do this Instagram wall? So, if you're a young, you know, person in this position, you're just starting out, start with the why. Uh, start with, hey, this is what we're trying to accomplish. And then this is the what. This is how we can do that. That's going to help you out quite a bit. Yeah. Dennis, one, uh, go, oh, go ahead. The, Dennis. Just to add to that, one of the uh, one of a really good book that I've read um, when I started off launching my own organization. And for, for those of you who don't know, uh, when I was in high school. Uh, I started an organization, an initiative called We Dine Together, right? Long story short, essentially that organization went from one club in South Florida to thousands of clubs across the U.S., right? One of the, one of the books that I've read before launching that around that season was this thing of Start With Why, right? It's by Simon Sinek. Uh, it's a book called Start With Why, and what happened is when I got this concept engraved in me, start with why, even though I was young in my communication, I didn't have tactics or strategies or anything like that or fancy communication, but I always communicated why. Why are we gathering, right? And I would say the reason why we have this club is turn to, to turn the school into a community, I said that when we when we when we launch a we dine together club in every single campus for a new student, it's a welcoming committee for a student experiencing social challenges or difficulties. It's a safe haven for the school. It's a catalyst for change. I was young and I was creating this language. I wasn't creating this language because I was a gifted speaker. I was creating this language because I started with this concept of why. 
right? When you can, when you communicate why, then you can truly connect with people to get them to know what. That's good. And if you're listening to your leader, uh, they're going to tell you exactly what they want. So let's say you're doing the men's event. They're like, hey, we, I want to create this great event where men come and they encounter God and they uh, have a great experience and they fellowship with other men and they get to know each other and they, they, they share this and it's something that they remember for the rest of their lives. And it's, I, that's the vision. That's what I want to do. Well, if you're listening to that as a, as a communications person and you, let's say it's the Instagram wall, you want to do this Instagram wall thing. Don't come forward and be like, hey, can we, can I have $1,200 to do this Instagram wall? Like that's, that's not the right way to do it. But if you're communicating the why, you're saying, hey, you said you wanted to create moments where, where guys get together and they remember this for the rest of their lives. I have a great idea. What if we did this Instagram wall? So it's, it's just a completely different way of communicating it. Um, you're not, you're working with your leadership uh, to help them win. And you're not just, you know, it's not about you or your idea. You know, now it's right. more about, hey, let's work together to, to get the win. That's right. So I, I think uh, one of the big things is that when you when you bring when you build wins over time, when you when you help the, the leadership win your ideas, your landing pages, your, you know, invite cards, your Instagram posts, your, your Instagram walls, whatever you're doing, and they're seeing that it's working and you're winning over time, they are happy to trust more. They're happy to be like, hey, Michael, what do you think? You know, what's your thoughts on this? And it, it, it can happen pretty quick. Like it can happen over the course of two, three months where, man, you're listening really well. You're communicating with the why and you're helping the, the wins to accumulate over time. And you get that that influence that that you're wanting. So um, good. Dennis, you, you'd mentioned something real quick. I just just for a point of clarity, what is a SWOT? What is a SWOT analysis? Yeah, a SWOT analysis. Again, it's really like a, an analysis tool. So SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Uh, so let's say if we're doing a SWOT analysis of a Sunday, what was the strengths? Or you, maybe you can go team by team, right? Or maybe you can even try this with your own uh, with your own uh, self, right? Like I'm, I'm in a startup right now and I just had the whole team go through uh, a SWOT analysis of all of the founders essentially, right? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What opportunities do I bring? What threats do I see, right? Um, for example, it can be something, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the opportunities that, you know, it could be, it's like, hey, an opportunity is if we added an Instagram wall that would allow people to stay longer after service, it would allow people to take pictures, uh, mingle, and what will happen over time is, uh, you know, you know, communities form. Uh, uh, what's, a, what's, a, what's a threat? A threat could be uh, right now, uh, or a weakness could be right now we don't have enough uh, members uh, or enough team inside the lobby to communicate with new guests. So new guests are coming in and they're leaving very fast because they're in it like they are overwhelmed by the environment, right? Uh, so strengths, what are, what are the strengths? Uh, what are the weaknesses? What are the opportunities? Uh, what are the threats? Uh, usually, the uh, I believe it's yeah. I believe the strengths. So there's it's like a a quadrant, right? On one side of the quadrant, it's internal. Uh, on the other side of the quadrant, it's usually external, right? So I can go about on that forever, but really, it's an analysis tool uh, that you can use to kind of measure where you are. Very good. So let's jump into the fourth and final point that we have, which is template. Uh, and the big idea behind this idea of a template is being able to create something and build something that's repeatable. So it's not just like a one off thing, but hey, how can you create a system around what you're doing, what you're promoting, what you're communicating? So now it's repeatable so you can get better at this. So this can be from one event to the next, or it, it also could be from one year to the next. So if you, right. do, if you do the men's event this year, okay, then next year, let's make it even better. You know, so it, could, it can go from that, or it could be like, again, from one event to the next where, hey, we, we're promoting the men's event. Next month, we're promoting the women's event. Let's take what we did here and let's create a system to do it better or even do it, you know, quicker for the next, for the next event that's coming up. 
Uh, Dennis, why don't you unpack uh, this idea of a template? I know you use this quite a bit with Hallelujah yeah. Social, and uh, it provides a lot of value to the churches that you serve. Yeah. I mean, again, it's like part of being a good steward, right, is not paying for these one-off services, right? It's doing – so, for example, like in my the language of my company, it's like we don't offer a service, but we help provide a system for growth. Uh, one of the things that we talked about a few minutes ago is, um, the, you know, on the topic of the why, right? Uh, starting with why, knowing your why, uh, asking yourself, why do we want to do this, right? Uh, one of the things that I thought of while we are talking about is the importance of communicating the why, right? Uh, the, the importance of communicating the why in your role. A couple episodes ago, uh, I believe we did it an uh, episode entitled Raising Up Digital Missionaries, right? Um, and the language of digital missionaries, again, is like these people aren't just volunteers, right? These people are missionaries. These people are not serving and accomplishing a task. They are a part of a ministry, Right. So if we're talking about raising up digital missionaries, if we're talking about communicating the why of what we do, we're not taking photos. We are capturing moments. Right. Uh, and ultimately what happens is those moments eventually will point people to Jesus. Right. We're not creating emails. Right. We're communicating the vision of the church to ultimately point people back to Jesus. So what happens is when you communicate the why, once you when once your mind frame is that, hey, we're raising up digital missionaries, then what that's going to require you to do, that's going to require you to see everything you do as something that you're setting up for somebody else, right? Uh, that's That's where templates come in, right? I say that you know, even when I stepped into a leadership role or the, an executive pastor role, one of the big things that I focused on is like, hey, let's do things that are repeatable, right? If you're doing something, you should not be the only person doing it. When Jesus came, Jesus wasn't out by himself doing all these signs, miracles, and wonders, a solo man. No, he brought some people along the journey with him, right? Uh, the two greatest questions you can answer in life is one, where am I going? And two, who will go with me? Right. So one of the two greatest questions that you can answer uh, in your ministry, in the role that you're you're in is like, hey, where is this headed? And two, who can I bring along with me? So when that's your mind frame, when that's your approach, then that's going to require you to create some templates. How can you document what you're doing? If you're creating a graphic, how can you how can you um, save those source files so it can be used later on? If you are creating a video, how can you categorize those videos in a Dropbox so then maybe eventually your church has its own asset library that you can upload on the website or the app? Right. So the goal of templates is to make sure that whatever you're doing has longevity. Right. So that it doesn't just make a difference today, but it also makes a difference tomorrow. At so least that's, that's what I think, you know. So good. it raises the, the level of excellence really across the board. If you're creating a, a template and then you're able to start instead of starting from zero, you can start at like 40 or 60, you know. Right. You're just able to then take that and go even further. So you, the level of excellence is 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 elevated. It helps you to get more advanced uh, information. So the more the more you get in advance, like if you, if you have a template, you already know you're going to do these these items and you know uh, in advance. Then you can get what you need in advance. So then you could be more creative. Your team could be more creative. Um, and it, again, it just that ultimately raises the level of, of excellence. It also um, lets everybody know what's happening. So everybody in your team, you know, if you're if you're working off a, of a template. Uh, so to speak, everybody knows then, OK, here's what we're doing. And now we can all move in the same direction in alignment. We're all rowing in the same direction, including leadership. Now, leadership knows what they can expect. Oh, OK, right. we're, we're going to you're going to provide these items for for this promotion. That's great. OK, now they know what to expect. And now as a team, we know what to produce. So there's not that. Yeah, I think we've all had the experience of like somebody comes along and they're like, can we get a video? <laughs> You're like, Wait, what is, is this it week? <laughs> we need it uh, 
by <laughs> Sunday. No, absolutely <laughs> not. We cannot do that. <laughs> Try again next year. <laughs> Yeah, so so templates. Uh, one of the things that um, that I that I learned to do again through trial and error and a lot of pain, and we're going to save you a lot of that right now. Uh, mm-hmm. What I what I would do is I I would create a a, a tier system, like a tier one, mm-hmm. tier two, tier three, um, for all the events that are happening f- for the year, and I would create a template. Okay, inside the tier one, there's uh, let's say there's uh, a there, there's ten things that we are going to do to promote this this uh this tier one event and tier one might be uh easter it's christmas it's it's like our big ones right oh and by the way because we already know these 10 things we're going to do we already know the budget we have uh five thousand dollars to to spend on this tier one and now leadership also knows oh you're going to do those 10 things that's awesome now leadership's on the same page or in advance you could present that and they could be like, well, how about we add this in there? So right. now, there, man, there's so much collaboration that's happening. Everybody knows what's going on. Uh, you're going to be able to win. And then maybe tier two is a little bit less. Maybe there's five items. Maybe it costs uh, $2,000 to do that one. And then tier one could be like, hey, there's just three things we're going to do. They're all free, you know, all social media type stuff that that's all free, but we can promote doing doing that. And then you just kind of plug in, okay, which events throughout the year are tier ones, tier twos, tier threes. And, and that, now you have your entire year planned. You know what to do. Your team knows how to win. You, you know what kind of information to collect. Uh, your, your leadership knows the budget that you're going to spend. And they're like, oh, man, is that all you need? Why don't you have some more? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that may not happen. But hey, what if it did, right? Mm-hmm. But you're just bringing a lot of value to the table by working. You're thinking more template versus thinking, you know, one off type of thing. And That's as I right. create, if you're a creative, I know this is hard. Like take a deep breath. I know right now mm-hmm. we're kind of messing you up right now. Take a deep <laughs> breath. It's okay. It's okay. You can still win. You can still be super, super creative when you think about things through through a template lens. You know what? I, I here's the thing. It's like I think when you think about templates, temp, templates actually give you more time and more room to be creative. Right. So real quick, if you're a social media manager, I'm going to save you so much time right now. When I do social media for ministries, I do social media. Social media for me is very quick and it's very easy. Right. I never I have never really struggled with social media. Right. Because anytime when I do social media, I come with a template. So, for example, real quick, uh, if you're a social media manager, First, start off by creating a template of what Monday through Sunday looks like, right? And list all of these things out. And what happens is you want to template those posts as much as you can to start, right? Now, I know there's going to be things that come up. I know there's going to be things that change, but you want to template it as much as you can. For example, on Mondays, one of the things that I do for the ministries that I work with is I have a this week at our church post, right? Or this week, insert your church name. And all it is, it's a little slider. And if you have great photo assets, you can plug it in and it's on Canva. We can include it uh, in the description notes, I guess. Uh, And it's just a template where all you do, and it's designed nicely, all you do is you just insert the different events that you have going on that week at the church. So if you know, hey, this week we have nine events, And you're like, I don't know how I'm going to promote all of these nine events. Well, here's what I've done for all all of the ministries I work with. We put all of those events in a slide and we say, hey, this is everything that's going on in our church. In the captions, we put something like, hey, there's an opportunity for you to get plugged in this week. See you at one of these events, right? Something easy like that. You can literally set a template for the next eight weeks if you want to or the whole year, right? And all you do is you just update the information. Some weeks, you're going to have the same events happening every single week. Maybe you have a Wednesday worship. Maybe you have a Friday prayer, whatever that may be, right? But we start off with the template. So then it's just on, we're just rotating. It's on uh, automation. Another way I'm going to help save you time is uh, one of the things that I do for ministries is I create a bunch of Canva templates uh, for this, uh, for for a ministry. So on our site, hallelujahsocial.com, uh, it's actually not visible publicly. I have to actually send a, a private link. But we have a list of maybe 30 to 35 templates uh, that we've created, whether they're verse graphics, whether they're Sunday invites, uh, whether they're uh, screens, right? 
we created these templates for you, communications people, social media people, to save you time, right? And then once you operate from these templates, then now you have room to be creative because you're not figuring, you're not on a Monday figuring out, okay, hey, what am I going to post today? right? Or how am I going to promote this event? No, you've already planned that out. You already have a template. Uh, so then that actually gives you room uh, to become creative. And then here's what happens is you won't miss the ball. You won't drop the ball on any events. Uh, one of the sad things that I see is a lot of times because communications people and social media managers, they have so much going on that they just start, you know, doing things quickly. And then what happens is over time, excellence begins to fall, right? Uh, and when excellence falls, people can notice that, right? Um, so we always want to be excellent in everything that we do. And I think templates are a great, great way uh, to do that. Yeah, we're talking about leading leadership and your leadership is going to love it. Like they're going to love the fact that you right. are organized. Everything you produce is excellent. Um, and then you're going to be able to say no in a way that is authentic and real and accepted. Like how many times have you been wanting to say no to your leader when they ask you for something, but you didn't feel like you could or you or your no was overridden by, mm -hmm. well, do it anyway. Like I've been there before. I felt that. But if you're if you're working in templates and you're saying this is the plan, like we discussed this uh, in advance, you were with me, you know, back in November when we discussed this, <laughs> the video wasn't in there. So so we don't have capacity to do it. And I can tell you just from firsthand experience, being able to look at my pastor and say, hey, listen, we just don't have the bandwidth to do that. And, and for him to be like, OK, I get it. Like that's a win. That's a win for everybody. Right. And he knows that I'm trying my very best. And if I could, I would, but I, I can't. So, so he's able to back off. And again, that's just a win for everybody. And again, with this idea of leading leadership, uh, we just want to make sure that you have four big ideas that you can take with you to win at communications at your church, no matter what position you're in. You might be a communications person, a designer. You might be wearing all the different hats. You're the you're the photographer, the, the videographer, the designer, the web guy, <laughs> your SEO, your everything. Uh, this is how you're going to win. First, you have to get trust, build trust. Build trust with your leadership. Number two, uh, get the timing down. Um, make sure you, you're you taking ownership of that timing and so the organization can win. Uh, make sure you have tactics in place uh, so that you're able to, uh, again, lead lead leadership through the tactics, the, the ways that you're going to do things. And you're, you're the expert that's leading the charge in your area of expertise. And then also templates. Here's the challenge. Everything you do, make it repeatable. That's what we mean with templates, like right. help yourself win next year, or maybe you move on to something else, help that next person win next year. Like, just think about it from that perspective, create those templates. I know this episode was a little bit longer. In fact, we're probably going to break this down into a couple different episodes, but I think our heart behind this episode is just to help you. If we could turn back time and go back to when we, I first started in a church communications this is what I would have told myself. <laughs> this is this is what I would have told a, a younger version of myself. And I hope you can uh, take full advantage of this. Um, we'd love for you to uh, subscribe to the podcast if you have not done that already. Um, Dennis, do you have any final thoughts before we close it out? Yeah, my, my final thought is this. It's sometimes when you're first starting off, a lot of this thing, a lot of the things that we talked about, it can be a little difficult. Uh, especially when you don't have a guide, especially when you don't have help, right? Um, so one of the things I'll say is reach out to either Michael or myself, you know, and we can walk you through some of this stuff. Maybe it's on a strategy call, whatever you want to call it, but we can help walk you through some of these stuff, or at least we can point you in the right direction, right? So if you're listening to this uh, and you've been struggling with some of these concepts, reach out right? Uh, the reason why we do what we do is because when we as ministries, we come together uh, and we talk about some of these topics, we all win, right? The gospel moves forward. Uh, if Jesus is our message, then we have to uh, collaborate uh, and actually figure out um, 
you know, how are we going to, you know, approach some of these things together? How are we all going to do individual things, but collectively uh, to move the message of Jesus Christ forward? Because again, our message of Jesus Christ is a hope for humanity won't ever change, but our methods must adapt. And what's that's, the best way message. for um, What's the best way for people to reach you? Yeah, I'm easy to find. You can uh, follow us at Hallelujah Social uh, if you want to tune into some of the things that we're doing. Or you can email me at Dennis, D-E-N-I-S, at HallelujahSocial.com, whether that's for the templates uh, or whether that's anything just from a free strategy call. Right. I'm not really trying to sell you. Uh, again, we just want to provide the most value value to you because yeah. that's when we all win. Dennis and I, uh, we, we've basically come together to just make this a great resource for you. If you need the show notes for anything we've talked about, or you want to listen to this podcast again, uh, go to churchbrainguide.com. Uh, you'll be able to get everything from this podcast episode, plus other additional podcast episodes and some other resources as well on that website. If you want to connect with me, the best way to do that is through an email as well. It's michael at churchbrandguide.com. Uh, that's probably the quickest, easiest way for me to get back with you. Uh, with, like Dennis said, we just want to help you to win. Um, so also be looking out for the next episodes. Again, if you subscribe, you'll know when those are coming out. Uh, but we just want to provide topics that are going to help you uh, in different areas of communication uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, helping your church to to get the word out there, to cut through the noise and to reach more people. Because ultimately, when you reach more people uh, and they come to the church, they get to, you get to see more life change taking place because of the gospel. You get to see more people joining the vision of your church. And that's a beautiful thing to be a part of. So that's what we're all about here at Church Brand Guide. So thanks for joining us on this episode, and we'll see you on the next episode.